Hey everyone, welcome back to the studio for another episode of Master Studies. On this week's episode, I'm going to take you guys through a killer chorus of blues in the key of F by the late great Freddie Hubbard. I'll play the transcribed chorus for you along with the recording, and then I'll walk you through the whole thing to give you some technique suggestions, as well as giving you some harmonic analysis along the way. This might just be 12 bars of a broader solo, but there's a ton of material in here worth learning. You guys ready? Let's get started. The whole solo this chorus is taken from is on Freddie's blues head, Birdlike, off the album Ready for Freddie. When we set about to transcribe, sometimes we might want to just grab a small chunk of a larger work. In this case, I've actually transcribed the first six choruses of his solo on this blues, but I'll just be showing you this one because it's one of my favorites. Have a listen to what it sounds like along with the recording. Like I said, these 12 bars are packed to the brim with fantastic ideas. It might take you a while though, depending on your skill level, to get these up to tempo and working on the guitar smoothly. Now let's pick apart the whole chorus and see where Freddie might have conjured some of these ideas from. At the top of the solo, he just runs straight up an F major scale to the fifth. Then he surrounds the third of the F. Normally, we'd be playing over the four chord in this bar, but since he's still targeting notes from F, it kind of seems to me like he's condensing the chords in his head and playing over the broader moves, kind of like how I showed you guys to comp over the rhythm changes in the last video. From the third of F, he runs down the scale to the six with two half steps like this. Then he surrounds the seventh diatonically and plays this lick to get us to the third of F again. I used a little bit of economy picking here to make this easier to play like this. From there, he comes down a diminished scale into the third of the B flat and then continues running down the B flat seven scale with an extra half step to get the seventh to land on B3. He does this cool little turn of the seventh on B flat and then runs up the arpeggio and a little fragment of the scale to land the seventh on B3 once again. Here's another spot where I'll use a little sweep to get up the chord in time. Landing on the 7th, this time he uses it to play an A flat diminished triad, which gives us the sound of a B flat 7 flat 9 here. Then he gets down to the 5th of the F in the next bar with an extra half step. Here we've got more F7 scale coming down to the root with an extra half step. Then he plays this classic digital pattern of 1, 2, 3, 5 to get himself into the next bar. Here things get pretty interesting. He plays this cell off of the A minor 7th. This we can kind of see as 5, 3, 4, 5 in A minor, or if we're thinking about it from the F major, it's 7, 5, 6, 7. Then he plays this cell over the D7. What I think might be happening here is that he's just really thinking about this E flat, voice leading into the fifth of the G7 that comes next. And he's kind of just built this neat little melodic cell around that. This is again, another spot where economy picking can really save the day and make playing this kind of thing a lot easier at such a brisk tempo. Here's how I'm handling the right hand for that lick. Over the G minor in the next bar, he plays down the triad from the fifth and then comes down to the major seventh before surrounding the third of the next chord diatonically. To finish out the chorus, he plays up this first inversion C7 and then does a turn off the flat ninth before running down the scale to the third of the F. He ends off by voice leading his way into the fifth like this to mark the end of the chorus. Now let's have a listen to what all this sounds like a little bit under tempo. Try to pay special attention to the articulation in both the left and the right hands here. Those little bits of economy picking and left hand legato will really go a long way towards making this easier for you to work up at the full tempo. Thanks for 
watching all the way to the end of the video. Let me know down in the comments if you found this lesson helpful. I think it's really important to transcribe shorter fragments of a solo sometimes. This chorus is super densely packed and I think it really stands on its own as a great etude. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload. If you want to take a look at more choruses from the same solo, the full PDF of today's lesson over at my Patreon page also includes five more choruses of Freddie's playing on this recording. You'll also be able to access the materials from every other video here on the channel for as little as 10 bucks a month. A huge thanks goes out to my wonderful patrons, PH, Josh, David Zuckerbron, Patrick Caron, David Nickel, Max Irwin, Everton Armstrong, Jay Jarek, Bill Jacob, Steven Schwartz, and Jazz Luminaire patron, Bibop Babadi. Thank you all so much for your continued support. Thank you to all of you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.